You guys ready to do this one here? I'm going to turn off alerts. Let's do it. It's old. It's two weeks ago. <laughs> it's old. It's like slightly, slightly older than the latest JS framework. Slightly so older. The reality for most of us in software engineering is that we aren't 25 year old models living in the Bay Area, working two hours a day and making $300,000 a year. What I okay, so real talk. That's not what you guys do. No? No one? Okay. I thought that was totally normal. That's you? I want to do is paint a more realistic picture of what the day-to-day -day of an engineer looks like at most small to medium-sized businesses. The biggest influence on your day-to-day -day as an engineer is the management style of your company. Most of the orgs I've worked at were agile or scrum-based. This means is that you. we work in two-week blocks. These are called sprints, with the expectation that we try to finish off all- Yeah, I've never had, uh, I've literally, I've literally never once planned a sprint at my decade at Netflix. Like, never once. Agile sucks. Change my mind. Our work within that time. Agile teams are infamously known for having a lot of meetings. There are just a few of them that are very important for developers. The first one is sprint planning. I don't think sprint planning is important. Before we start every block of work, we plan out what kind of work we're going to do within that period of time. And this is very important for developers for two reasons. One is that you can see at a high level. Okay. I'm glad that he put soy dev over here. Okay. Clear soy dev VS code vibes energy coming strong off this man. Uh, obviously, Chad energy probably uses Vi, um, not even Vim. But real talk, how many of you actually get a meaningful amount of things? Real, real, real. I actually want I actually want to know this. How many of you actually get press one in the chat right now? How many of you actually get real meaningful value out of sprint planning? And how much could that have like So walls of a very few ones. Okay. Real talk, how many of you get something a little bit out of sprint planning that probably could have been condensed 85%? Press 1. Okay, so there is a little bit of value. But perhaps not the most important meeting value. All right, that's good. I like that. Sprint planning is mostly management. Yeah. It's just about communication. I do it. It truly is. When I, the last time I did agile, what I realized is that nine tenths of the law is perception. Not, nothing to do with anything else. What the most important tickets are. And if you're edging for a promotion, you can go try and pick up that piece of work. Another one is I'm actually, you can see what kind of technologies the company. I public edge for a promotion. You know what I'm talking about? A little public edge trying to introduce in the future and you can usher yourself in to working with those and sort of learning on the job another meeting is stand-ups and these stand-ups are my least favorite meetings of all time i've had probably about seven stand-ups at netflix and i absolutely hate every last one of them stand-ups are worthless stand-ups are because someone in management are too lazy to read an email from seven people I always felt like the asshole. Am I the asshole on Reddit? Because the moment someone was like, so anyways, this weekend, I'd go, no, shut up. We're not talking about your personal life. I, I want to be out of this immediately. So tell me what you did. Tell me your road blocker. And tell me what you're going to do. Because I'm going to get the hell out of this meeting right now. 
I don't want to hear about your dog. I'm sure your dog has a beautiful little selfies you take with you and your dog. You call it your child. You have this like long emotional connection, but I don't want to hear about it. I don't. I stop it. Stop it right now. That's me at a stand-up every single time. These are mostly held for daily progress on your work. These are great sessions. Oh, I also forget that they're daily. Oh, I did have one project. And one of my first projects at Netflix was called Darwin Social Mountain, where we built out the Facebook integration where you used to be able to recommend videos to friends and all that. Holy cow, did that take so much time out of my life. It sucked me dry. It sucked. It sucked me all the way out. Hated it. To communicate to the rest of the team if you're blocked or if you have any questions. Finally, another very important meeting is the estimation session. Have I been away from Agile this long that there's an estimation session that's separate from sprint planning? Yes? Oh, Lord Jesus, it's a fire! <laughs> I ain't got no shoes or nothing! I just ran for my life. That's what I would do, okay? I would quote sweet sugar brown and I'd get the hell out of that place. My goodness. You get triple meetings? Triple? Developers basically make a rough guesstimate on the amount of effort and time that it takes to complete. Real talk. Are managers allowed in the time? Uh, hold on. So real, real, real talk. Are management is management allowed in time estimation meetings? I don't think they should be allowed. They should not be allowed. Looks like a mixed bag. They should not be allowed. Imagine trying to plan and give real time estimates with management. There, you'd be like. Uh, do I multiply by three or divide by two? I don't know which one to do. Oh, shit. <laughs> like, I would most certainly want to multiply by three. Complete a task. To make these estimations, a lot of companies use t-shirt sizing. Like, this is a small piece of work, medium piece of work, or large piece of work. I don't like t-shirt sizing. I think it's much, much better to go days, weeks, months, years. Right? Yeah, that's going to take me some days. Yeah, that will take me weeks. That will take me months. Just keep it super simple. Right? Days. That could be one day. Could be an afternoon. Could be three days. I don't know. Well, that way, because years, the reason why I do years is because when someone tries to like, yeah, why don't you just implement, uh, could we get HTTP3 implemented on our platform? You're like, I don't know how long that's going to take. Like for television, we would have to implement HTTP3. Like, I would have to implement it. There's a lot of stuff to HTTP3. Like, there's a ton of stuff. It's not simple. It's extremely complex. I've done HTTP2 and WebSockets. HTTP3 is like, it's hard. It's fast, but it's hard. Rewrite it in Rust, years category. Or they use a numbering system, and they're normally presented by a product manager or business analyst. Or if the work's extremely technical, say refactoring some old code, it's... jQuery, everybody. jQuery using Sublime with the default... Is it Monokai? Mo Mo Monokai? Color scheme. Hey, does anyone remember this? Did you pay for it? Did anyone pay for it? One in the chat if you pay paid for it right now. One in the chat if you paid for it. Right now. Press one in the chat if you paid for it. Press 69 in the chat if you close the please pay for me window 700 times. 69 in the chat if you close that window 700 times in your lifetime. Yeah. Yeah, that was me. I've, I probably have closed that window. I've spent so much time closing that one window. That singular window has cost me more than, than, than WinRAR. It's done by a developer or a tech lead. Can we take a moment and just back up for a quick second? Factoring some old code. It's done by a developer or... This guy has fallen off, man. I remember when I first got into YouTubing. 
years ago. I thought that guy was cool. Real talk. Thought that guy was cool. Bet you a lot of you did. You just don't want to admit it. A lot of you are a bunch of a bunch of punk asses, not admitting it. You're 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 hiding from the reality. Oh no, I know. I said was. I said was. I never said is. There's no is. Okay, we're not debate. I debate the term is. Right? Depends on what you mean by is. Right? I'm not saying that. Yeah, there's there's some was in there. The was is hard. For tech lead. So that scope of work I referred to earlier is normally known as a ticket or a project. And it's hosted on a project management software. Sometimes it can be Atlassian Suite, so that's Jira. So I think one big thing, uh, by the way, shit bucket, great joke. I love it. I love every moment of that joke. I think one thing that, that could be really strongly taken away why Netflix can do what they do is that we don't Every individual person is kind of responsible for like a feature or leading a feature. And so, and part of those features is just like cleanup tasks. And so if you're just like, hey, I'm going to go do a bunch of stuff. Like no one, you don't really like the, 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 the level of tracking isn't the same. Now, a lot of people use Jira, obviously, especially for when anything to do with production, changes that need to happen in production, anything that you need to communicate to a broader amount of people, people waiting on a specific fix, anything like that. Jira is a pretty good way to do all that. But for the most part, it's just like none of that, right? At least in my world, it's very little of that. There is some, but it's very little. People avoid Jira for the sake of avoiding Jira. Confluence and Bitbucket, or it could be on GitHub or GitLab. And now that we're done, planning what we're going to do, estimating what we're going to do, we finally get into the good stuff, which is development. And as an engineer, you're probably going to get a few of the following tickets. So it's going to be a bug. I just got the highest anxiety of my lifetime watching this person type. Okay, there's this development. First off, what what is going on here? Are you looking at that? What what finger are you using to press backspace? Is that middle finger? That 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 this is this is what this is pinnacle dev cringe. Okay, that's how I look at this right here. There's nothing more personified cringe than that. And as an engineer, you're probably gonna get a few of the following tickets. So it's going to Ugh. be a bug from customer support, maybe a new feature, an internal tooling. And if you're lucky and your company's very nice, you'll get to refactor some tech debt. Now, while you're in development, you're- Is this the average person's experience? Real talk, press one in the chat if this is- Is this like what you, you do? Press one. Yep, that wall of ones right there is just reminding me how how much I'm out of touch with reality. Hey man, you want to learn how out of touch you are? Ask a bunch of people a question. <laughs> oh, I feel hurt. <laughs> You're actually going to spend a lot of time researching before you even code. Still feeling out of touch. So that means reading up on the documentation in the ticket. I just pressed pause. This was this was not a plan. This was not a plant. Okay, I did not mean to I did not do this. I I don't even know what happens here. JS sucks. Do you like that? JS sucks while writing TypeScript. Sifting through the code. Or if you're really new to the industry, and this happened to me a lot in the beginning, you're going to spend a lot of time getting your environment up. Now that Massive respect for this guy, okay? Hey. 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 Hey, Big Box Swee. Go subscribe to him. Big Box Swee. Let's go like this. We're going you know what we're going to do? We're gonna, we're going to go here. I'm going to I'm going to click his name. Of course, it's going to be in the description. I'm going to toss it in right here.
Okay, go ahead, give him a subs go ahead, give him a subscription. Okay. Your environment's up. You understand the problem. You have a working solution in your head. I get it. You want to go and get check out a new branch and start coding. Oh, that speed. So sometimes when you're coding, it's very natural to be stuck or blocked by something that you don't really understand. And if you have a really good team culture, you can reach out to your teammates and they can hop on a call with you or come to your <laughs> desk and you guys can work together. That can't be real. That had to be a staged. <laughs> oh, oh my goodness. This is called pair programming, and it's very popular in the industry because it's a really good way to build teamwork and actually learn a lot from your seniors and share knowledge. It's a fantastic practice, and it's one of the ways I've grown the most as a developer. So you fix the bug, or you've built the feature, and you've that. written your tests. You can. Thank you. Appreciate that. What's in the box? Not gonna tell you yet. Not gonna tell you yet. Now push your code and get it reviewed. Comments might start rolling in from other engineers or tech leads. And these are mostly about things like naming conventions, the complexity of the code you've written, whether or not you're using best. I really hate naming. Knit, knit. Hey, uh, this is a knit, um, but it really bothers me. Uh, you know, when, when you uh, said like items, I prefer, I personally prefer when you put like a type in there as well. I know we use TypeScript and sure the LSP works, but you know, I just like to see the word list when you, when you do it. Okay. I hate them. Hate it. Practices, whether or not you just rewrote a bit of code and you could actually use it from somewhere else in the repo. Oh, okay. That's supposed to be the Spider-Man meme. I'm all confused now. Once code review is done or while code review is happening, a member of your quality assurance team will pick up your ticket and that test that feature. It's fucking disgusting. It's at this stage, if you have <laughs> any bugs, you're going to have to go and fix it and get it code reviewed again, restarting the whole problem. This looks like the Gorilla's 19, uh, 2000 track, but all weird. Awesome. So for new developers, I highly recommend test out the QA tests yourself and make sure that you're not going back and forth with them because it can get really frustrating. Another important aspect yeah. of the job yeah. that's not really talked about is documentation. This can be internal documentation, so like why a specific he also had library or package was used, or why a code base is designed the way it is, or it could be external documentation to system. Documentation is always tricky, you know, no matter, I feel like documentation beyond like large scoped items, like, hey, this is how you launch a server internally. To me, it just seems like as the scope gets smaller, I find that documentation gets progressively harder. Like a tool, here's a readme, here's how to use it. But once people go beyond that level and they're like, in this file, oh, this function, you know, like once you start getting too deep, dude, I find that at a job, that quality of code, that quality is just so far down. Sadmins or cloud engineers on how to get the system up and running on their environments. To sum up all the parts, your average day would probably <laughs> look like a few meetings here and there, maybe stand up or estimation, Ooh, maybe hello, a cool pair Jay programming nipples. session or a design documentation hell brainstorming yeah. session. Otherwise, you should have full autonomy and control of what you're doing with your time. So yeah, that pretty much wraps up this video. Thank you for your time. Like and subscribe if this brought any value, uh, uh, and I'll see you in the next one. Uh, 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 uh. Who's that good-looking guy, huh? Who's that?